calling the emergency select board meeting to order at 316. Um, we are going to talk all things flooding today and no other items. Uh, we'll kick off with where we are right now, status update, those types of things. We'll talk about where we're headed next, and then we'll talk about resources and how people can obtain those resources. Everybody who is in person, there's a copy of the emergency management plan at the end of the table if you would like a copy. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. So let's start up talking about current status, where we are. Great. Status updates, uh, when preparing for flooding, uh, Public Works and the library have worked hard to do everything up there. Public Works crew, I think I might just pass that update on to Jason. Uh, let us know what you've done, what roads are closed, what roads are of concern. Just a brief one. All right. Uh, Lane is closed. Uh, Water roads are up. Yep. A couple feet. Uh, back, we're monitoring and we're monitoring for the bridge. Uh, road wise, they're all except for 11 away and passable at this point. Uh, they went around and put the cutouts in the last two and three and put the water bars and the board that we learned about. They look good. I mean, all back, back road up and then we've got the cutouts in. Last time I was at Scribner Bridge a couple hours ago, we were maybe two feet before it's going to start coming around the bridge. And you guys are filling some standbags. Yeah, we're staging. filling standbags for, um, I guess, anybody that needs them. There's a little bit of supply for what we had. Uh, where are you doing it? Yes. We're down, we're down in the old shop right now. The truck's going to be fitting there. There's stuff in the village, just guard and just for a bit of time. As far as building equipment, and our equipment's all up top, so it's a pretty open area. Um, so what about River Road East, Jason? Uh, River Road East is uh, that a lot of foot and a half from the bridge right now. And as soon as it gets up, I'm going to put high water uh, road flow signs up. Where is that back, River Road East? Which bridge are you talking about? Uh, Jason. The, the intersection of Waterman and River Road, you keep going out past there and it's for a mile out there. Oh, okay. Right below the swamp. It's not Waterman Bridge, but it's a brook. Yeah, I just did Waterman know. Brook. It's, it's, it's Waterman Brook where it comes into River Road East. Where it comes into the Little River, pretty much. Right oh, I'll pass the Yeah. 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 I guess I don't know that. Yeah. Um, okay, what about what? Oh, that's Waterman Brook. Okay. And then at Willow Crossing, RJ was here a little while ago and just said it was near the road, but not yet over the road. Is Cambridge underwater? Is that closed down? I haven't heard. I think there's flooding will be later after us. Slightly after us. <laughs> but we'll cut you had heard their water was at the bridge. Uh yes. So I was gonna give that update. I just talked with Roger uh 14 minutes ago. And the uh iron gate bridge, iron something bridge in uh Wolka, which is a good indication of flooding in Johnson has come up significantly since 10 a.m., which is the last time he checked it. Uh, it's now blocking half of Route 15 there, so we have more water coming. Water is up over, over Route 15. 15, yes. In the village, we will pass where, where that bridge is. It's the bridge that historically, they, Eric can probably tell you the exact location of it. Well, he said it was the Iron Bridge. I, I'm not sure exactly which one he does, but I know he has a reference up there. That he, which is, that is a good indicator of what comes in. Well, the Iron Bridge is the one on the way to their school, I think, right? No, there's a couple, there's a couple more there. I can't. But that's the Iron one, I think, right? The one that is just outside of, on the old Hardwick side. If it's, anyway, if it's, it's that bridge, across. the village of Wolf is underwater. Probably. Ah, uh, okay. um, because that bridge is higher than stores. But I have uh, informed RJ that the water is coming up there because he has to be kept informed about that. Um, in terms of historical water flows, um, Eric 
Do you want me to read it? You can read them all. They are to the research. Yeah. So the just for historical reference, the the greatest flood event in our days anyway was in 1995, and the water level was 19.8 feet. In the Halloween flood a few years back, it was 17.28. And prior to that, in 2011, which I believe was Irene, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I think no, that was. It was after that, okay. Yeah. So the flood of 2011 was 16.97 feet. And we're pretty good. The current National Weather Service prediction is 18.2 feet. Ugh. So that puts us um, about a foot above the Halloween storm of 2019, but below the flood of 99 by about by more than a foot. And the flood of, Not 95, flood of 95, I think you're saying. That's what I meant. Yeah. 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 Below the flood of 95 by 1.3 feet. Two thousand eleven. That's too much. That's the water was not over Main Street. It was over Willow. down here. Mm -hmm. uh, it was over at Willow Crossing, and it did severely screw things up at Sterling yeah. Market. But they didn't have floodgates. That was two thousand eleven. That was two thousand eleven. Two thousand nineteen was three tenths of a foot higher than that. Where we did see was the most recent, flood. The most recent. yeah. The Halloween flood in Sterling. Did Sterling survive that? It did. Well, they had to like clean up their floors and their lower shelves. Right. They did get water, isn't that? Yeah, I think they did. I think they lost the product. Product. up and done it. And what about um. Here, do you have any sense of whether it makes a difference? The guy on it is still managing. It's still several feet below the bank coming 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 around and probably four or five feet below Sterling. Mm, I just was there. It's probably 18 inches to two feet under okay. the bridge. Right. And it's getting close to the so um, Okay. I just wonder if it makes a difference um, how much is coming out of these versus how much is coming out of Wolfgang to our world. Yeah. It does make it. It all makes a difference. The, as I was telling Evan, the river gauge is similar to the main travel fit. It's a real good rule of thumb on what you're going to have for flooding. Mm -hmm. But depending on the characteristics of the storm, and the way the guyon is moving along oil right here after the river gauge, it you know, river gauge could be a little bit lower, and yet we're experiencing more flooding mm -hmm. than vice versa. So it, the guyon does play a part. It, it seems my gut feeling is, is that they're getting more rain to the east versus out of the east. That would be good. That would be good. Because the little oil will take it. You can keep yeah. up with it, maybe. Well, and it won't. It, they got amber up in the And, I, you know, just looking at my backyard right now, this is actually uh, BJ and, and Gigi's backyard. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely, I mean, you know, yeah, their pool submerged. Um, it's pushing back. Out of my back. Yeah. It, it might be, you know, water from the oil flowing backwards or yeah. whatever, but. It's certainly uh, not going to make much of a difference for Railroad Street, I don't think. Yeah. As in Railroad Street is going to get flooded. Certain, I mean, a lot of the backyards, a lot of the backyards are going to. Last flood was at the window, so about two or three inches above the window at the back of the library. And then 17 feet over that. Foot over that. Yeah. That was in what year? 1919. If, if we get, if the predictions come true. It's a fluid situation. <laughs> I, did, I did talk to Jane oh, about well. it. She, uh, you know, she keeps a close eye on it because of uh, the library. And her, you know, she has a good feeling that the gauge that you read on the fly isn't always that accurate. Sometimes it does surpass it. I was wondering why in the key time coming down the knees is a big plus. Because we're, we're reading the stream of that. Yeah. You can really get, a, as far as the village is concerned, if the flood stage is relatively high on the ground, it can, it, 
the ability of the guy on the empty into the well gets bigger. So water starts backing up. S same situation if you have an ice, an ice jam there, it can, it can back up really quick. So while it feels like the uh, measurements haven't shifted a lot, if for those of us watching it over time, the trend line is still going pretty straight up. Um, just for reference, because I know that there's been some talk about when things are going to shift. Um, and right now, the peak, you're still looking at around 2 a.m. for peak, based on what Noah is saying. For, for Johnson. Yep. For Johnson, very specifically. Lamoille River at Johnson, very specifically. And peaking at 18. Point two. Point two. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's where we are right now. Is there anything else about where we are right now that is worth bringing up? Yeah, ask Jason a quick question about hot bag. You you guys are square monitoring hot bag. And, uh, are we at a point, or will we be at a point where we want to notify anybody down there in the you know the immediate flood? Yeah, usually when it gets up to a well, an area down, it usually gets it first. It's like three houses down. We'll. They usually know what was going on on three doors in this town, what was coming up, but we didn't in 2019. We will put these doors on the other side of the road, people coming up through. Let's talk about a whole bunch of things about what we're going to do, because I think that's just one piece of what we're going to do. Um, <clears throat> so I have another question about what we, I, I was going to ask the same question regarding to Lenway, and since that has already happened, I just, have you already made contact with the folks on yeah, Lenway? Okay. Made contact, made contact with the rail trail, kind of like they use that, they're going to use that, they're going to sell on for a situation that they feel is getting too bad, they're going to evacuate and take it over somewhere, but it's still, I guess, what they want. Thank you. Um, okay, so where we're we going, we're talking about evacuations already. On the rail trail front, there is a possibility that the rail trail washes out too. So we've already heard about the rail trail washing out in a few cases. I just want to make sure if we're sending a RJ had a good point earlier. He said if we're sending a message, we need to be really clear with our message, keep it simple and repeatable. So we want to use the same words with people over and over again so that we don't the elephant game doesn't start happening or the telephone game, whatever you I don't know why I call it elephant game. I always do. Um Child, that's just what you heard. Sure. <laughs> it, it started as um, telephone and made it right, right, to turned it out. That could be so. Anyway, the telephone game we don't want that to happen, so we want to be really clear with the words we use and that they're repeatable. Um, that being said, if we're going to knock on doors and tell people that they may want to consider leaving their homes, my first question is, What areas are those areas? and then a follow up to that for each of those areas, has any communication already happened? And as part of that communication, I think we need to be clear about the risk of using the rail trail too. Uh, so do we want to jump in with who, like where? That was a loaded question. I know. Um, at this time, I'm uh, just talking with a lot of people around town. I don't see uh, an evacuation being needed uh, based on the flood levels expected on what's there. If there is imminent danger, um, the fire department will go around and, and recommend evacuation. We are standing up a shelter right now. We still have a couple of steps to finish that, but there's plenty of time <clears throat> so that people have a place to go if there is an evacuation. Uh, knocking on people's doors and saying, informing them on the situation, letting them have a plan. Uh, historically, you're kind of following what's always been on the runway lane, happens first, and then the other problem areas for just informing people. Did that answer the question? Um, actually, okay. There's a lot of questions. Yes, there's there. a lot there. Okay. Evacuations, not right now. Got it. Emergency. Emergency shelter is being set up, got it. And that will only be set up in the event of an evacuation, correct? No. Okay. That uh, will be set up. Regardless? Regardless. Okay. So emergency emergency shelter will be available tonight. 
Yes. Okay. We need to, okay, that's something we need to notify people about. Correct. Right. The only people using the rail trail is the three residents on Lenway. And rail trails higher down that road by eight feet. So it's definitely a safer option. And then they have a trail that comes out to the snow machine bridge that they can take that over and they said if it gets back. So that, are you uh, updating the town website? Great, no. Great. So no, we'll get to that. But okay. Yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. So for notifications, we need to notify people about the shelter. Got it. We've already done some notifications by knocking on some doors on Lineway because that's the most impacted currently. Are there others in Lineway that need to be notified or everybody that needs to be has been? Okay, cool. Are there other roads that we need to do the same for on, with knocking on doors? We better not have a guy trying to hug it to the place. Gary Cole is happy. Yeah. He got another. There's another driver. Yeah. Like those out. So they could get out. So the 19 storm. The resident that lives farther on that road bought. So the 19 storm, the storm in that shot road, yeah, everything could be above that one. We're going to have to speak up so that Donna can get notes. Yeah. So if everyone, Mark, if you could speak yeah. up. Well, my concern was I think the 19 storm cross road. So that so okay. the Main Street, so that Main Street was closed right here, Route 15. The 19 storm went between my building and the other building that had a fire and crossed the yeah. street. And the made, Halloween storm of 2019. Yeah. Yes. And I think it shot Main Street down. I think it's saying that's a bit shot down. So that feature is called. Right. It is, but it is also something that we need to have in mind. Did that if we were going to be possibly a foot higher than 19, we need to work at 19 of the room. I would want to play a little more. Okay. Yeah. So if Main Street is affected, Railroad Street is definitely affected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it, I think it was only the entrance of Railroad Street that actually was fully underwater back then, but yeah. And it was closed. It was closed, yeah. Right here, it was Yeah. Or about fire. Okay. Um, so anyway, the other roads that we talked about were Hogback, Scribner, Bridge. Scribner Bridge has, like there's no one's gonna get stuck on Scribner Bridge, right? Like they're on either side of the bridge, they can get out. You know, there's other ways to go. Um, Hogback, you you have signs added and it likely will shut it down, but people again can get out on either side or is there anyone that will be surrounded? There's a few residents where it was that uh, they stayed put last time and they just waited it out. But that's the ones that we notified the lowest spot down the back of our section. We're going to get a notified. The camera does the same thing. Either they set up an LD tour or the mock water, anyone going out of our back or coming down from the water. Okay. Floods on uh, the Johnson side, Cambridge is going to be flooded. Yeah, so, the building, yeah. Okay, but there are residents that could be isolated that just should have a heads up. Okay. Um, so we can reach Lundway. Lundway we've already dealt with River Road East. <laughs> River Road East, we're saying that there should be some notifications. There's eight residents out there that will be shut off to the town, basically. Yeah, okay. And then I just want to make sure we have all of the points identified that we need to. Um, what do we talk about? And that Willow Crossing. Anybody at Willow Crossing? I mean, no. Okay. Not that I know. Yeah. Okay. And anybody else? Like, are there any other roads where somebody might be isolated by water coming on either Where's side of the best? Some people again. It could be, yeah. It could be if it comes up or not.
Okay. And we would basically do door knocking based on need. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any questions about door knocking? I'll move on to the topic. Yes, we have held the street information in the areas and make thought patterns. Uh, are you going to be doing evaluations or is this just going to be information uh, the current plan is not to do evacuations and to do distribution of awareness. Uh, one thing that I had spoken to the previous emergency management director about a couple of times was uh, the trailer park, Emblo Jollies. And I believe in the 95 flood, you said they brought everything up to that flood level. And we are predicted to be 1.3 feet lower than that flood level. So I don't see evacuation being needed. If the storm changes, we might need to inform people out there too. You know, the question is so, at, so sorry, what, was that the, the trailer park was brought up to the 500 year floodplain. I don't remember if they went 500 or they went put it with a water park close to the 95 flood and went above that. Supposedly. Anything up to the 95 flood that would not be hit. Did they just bring the trailers up or did they actually bring the roads up? Because if you drive down there, the roads, you guys have done, the roads are substantially lower than the trailers. Plus, the roads may be under, might be potentially close. There may be ice. Beyond the trailer park. Yeah, in which case, yeah. those people beyond the trailer park coming down. Um, we know if uh, uh, yeah, those three they may not, yeah, they may not be able be, to get out. Yeah, could be stranded. That Kylie's trailer, there's two down there, correct? There's, there's two down there. Yeah, yeah. 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 they were hit yeah. in 95 and they have not been touched, so they tend to be important. What is that road called? What, 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 that is a storm Okay, Okay, so this is informational, not evacuation still. Did you have another question, RJ? I feel like you said something else. No, I was just trying to understand the scope of what we were going to distribute. And the reason that I asked about that is <clears throat> we're, up, we're here to help. But if there is not an imminent emergency and you want to engage us as a resource, we're not really prepared to take on the labor costs associated with that. I can shoulder some of that, but if we're not actually going down there because we have an imminent emergency that needs an emergency response, if we're taking a proactive uh, distribution of information, I'm going to ask if there's a way that you can help me with some of the expenses that I would incur. Yeah. Because it technically is not a dispatch emergency response. Not to be tired and not to cause, uh, we are here to help, but we're not prepared to incur those expenses. That's totally fair and understandable. Yeah. And that was the reason I asked the question which side of the activity are we on? Yep. Um, and I don't think that there's a specific ask yet. That's going to depend on where we are with Jason and crew and where we are with water. Uh, I think so. There may be an ask, but I don't think we're asking for anything yet. I think, can I just say something real quick? Sure. I think we need to think about the faith that we have in the forecasting that we're all looking at here. I don't, because I know we know that 2019 is at 17.28, but what was the forecast for that? The forecast for that 15.5? Yeah. We hit 17.28. You know, I just think that's something we're going to keep in mind. Unfortunately, they don't publish that. <laughs> they don't publish their errors. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but that's a good saying if they forecast low, we could see 20 feet. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, 
and they change four feet and they say one board has to the next. Yeah. For today. Today. Yeah. yeah. This morning. As they get closer, yeah, it changes. Yeah. That's totally. The, the uh, big printout they did on the thing at 327 a.m. had 18 2. But then the graph, they had a 10 something this morning, was 14 9. Now that I called it later, it is no, it's the 18 2. Yeah. yeah. Eric and I worked together on that because we had conflicting info. And right. Uh, so it turns out it was the bigger number. Okay. okay. Um, so, notifications. So, um, we can maybe talk offline about how we do the notifications. And if the board agrees, that if we do need the additional manpower of the fire department, that we can request that knowing that we'll get charged for a time. Yeah. Does the board feel like that is a good approach? I'm, I mean, to me, this is gonna, the, the board, I think it's a good approach. You're gonna be sound asleep at 2 a.m. You are and Mark is not. I am not going to be sent to sleep. I'm going to be in a basement somewhere. But I mean, so are we delegating to Evan to call these folks? And it's already delegated as a great senior. Right. Yeah. So if we declare we asking for a vote from us to say if we declare an emergency, yes. I would ask that we meet in the middle somewhere. We can figure it out. I understand what you're saying about not having the resources. Um we are trying to be proactive here because if we waited and then there was an event, you know, I'd have the entire fire department out for 48 hours. You're saying that would be in your budget. I'm more than happy to support the fire department. I'm just saying we can meet in the middle and be a team partners together. Well, I, don't, like, I don't want you guys to eat it. I'm looking at it as an opportunity to try to handpick though. If, if we were called out, we have an obligation to go, we have to go and you, Want to use it as a resource? We're willing to do everything we can to help. Um, if some of that time could be reimbursed, that would be appreciated on my end, just in terms of everything. Uh, I would also say a recommendation would be with your decision if you are going to get out there and try to share some information with the homes. Some people might yield that and prepare themselves, we really should get out there before dark because it is extremely more difficult to cover the territory, have the accountability after dark. Yeah. And if your citizens are going to, community members are going to maybe want to do a little something to help them prepare themselves. Right. If we could do it in the daylight, it's absolutely for them. Yeah. We, we can possibly get called out for something right. at any time. Right. right, yeah. Fire. Happened. They happen a lot. Don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say I that. Should, I, should have said that. <laughs> I am leaning towards being more proactive about getting notifications out, even if the notification is, you know, very. We don't have to necessarily scare people into leaving, but just give them the information that, hey, you may potentially be in. A flooded area and make plans if you need to. I was thinking. I think. I think we actually should just write up a little flyer and knock on doors and hand them the flyer and say, "Here's the information we know. We don't know what's actually going to happen. We can't predict the future, but we do know that you're in a house that could be isolated. Um, and here's the information. You know, so you can make the best decision for you and your family." Um, and do the knocking on doors earlier too. But the question I have is who's knocking on the door? But I would offer a possible alternative solution to that. Number, number one, if you're at a place that floods, you know it. You already know. It. I mean, Bill Davis knows his property floods. So uh, in most of those people, based on past experience, most of those people don't wait. They stick it out. They wait it out. And that's ultimately their decision. Mm -hmm. All we can do is say, we think you should evacuate. Or we want you to be aware that there is a danger coming up. I have a real hard time believing most of those people aren't already aware of that. 
Um, so we can we can use a lot of resources going out and knocking on the doors. I don't know what it's going to do. Um, how about we try to make a, an attempt at reaching people by phone um, from here, which I think is a lot more both in terms of personnel and efficiency, um, and those that we can't actually reach, you know, leave a leave a door hanger or whatever. Sure. I was going to ask if phone calls were a possibility. Um, Jason, if you can get a flyer made within a short amount of time. In my group, we get it out of there to the people on the road that's going to affect. We're all caught up on the stuff we're doing actively. That's phone calls about. Okay, cool. Eric? Yes. I call that Eric. This Eric. Good Eric. Bad Eric. There's too many Eric's. I guess I want to maybe caution the board in thinking of the approach and not getting too deep in the uh, really, you know, your role tonight probably the main role is to declare a state of emergency, and your EMD then pretty much takes over. And his job will be to set up an incident command structure, and he'll be having to report back to you regularly. But you know, really, he can't wait to have decisions for board meeting to decide, and he's just you've got to trust. Him. The decisions he's going to make is really going to fall on his shoulders. And I think he's ready, but um, don't try to get too far in the weeds. I think we don't we want to be careful of that. That's good advice. Okay, but Sorry. I'm happy to do a really quick flyer if you want one, Evan. Uh, make it a lit. Okay, so cool. What else do we need? Uh, the other thing which was brushed on was declaring a state of emergency um, for Johnson, which we have to do here. Uh, the board would need to authorize somebody to sign it, either the chair or me. No, I, just want to, I just want to point out that I, I think maybe things have changed a little bit, but this form actually says anyone who's a select board member the emergency management director, the town manager, or the mayor can actually declare a municipal state of emergency. So we can take an action but it to matter. declare and have a board, but I would advocate that we do that, but Evan should sign the document as the emergency management director and submit it to uh, the emergency management. Do you want a motion? Thank you. Formally making a motion makes it very I'll, clear. I'll make a motion to uh, declare a state of emergency under BSA Title 20, Chapter 1, and to authorize the emergency management director to uh, submit a local jurisdiction request for emergency declaration form. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. What else do we need? I think at this point, um, we're good. I'm going to stand up the EOC. That's what other people are here for. I have, it's going to be a quick meeting. I have one question. Is the board okay with uh, some of the employees taking equipment and the home? So all of our resources are not on one side of the bridge? That's a great idea. Yeah. I'm walking right up. I'm definitely for us. What do you guys want to do? You don't have Jacob. consensus, by the way. Jacob is going to take it back home. He looks up in the park. And Ryan is going to take it down to our home. And they're going to go there to the shop. And then so you have the rented excavator and a backhoe and a truck on that side of town. What the ground put in. We have our gravel down this side of town with a loader and two trucks. I'm all for it as long as their personal trucks are at a high enough point <laughs> that they don't get flooded. Um, Good thing. Okay. Um, anything else we need? Eric? If you don't mind if I took the floor, I just had some thoughts. Go for it. Here. And they better not be in the weeds, though. <laughs> <laughs>
entire <laughs> uh, I gave somebody an incident command structure that Gordy had drawn up here to go pretty simple, pretty tailored to this community. Bill Evans had something to think about. I do believe it's not my truck. Okay, perfect. <laughs> And like you say, you're going to set up a team and meeting, which I think is great. Uh, something to think about in a pretty important role to keep the informational officer. Typically, that was the administrator. And in previous times, we've had the village manager as a backup. I don't know if that's still the case. And if so, you're, you're going to want somebody, you know, getting the message out, the same message, repeating the same words. And that sort of thing. Even everybody informed is people are going to be looking for information. Um, something I think the board should decide is what kind of spending capacity you can allow the EMP. I had the latitude of a few hundred dollars that I could spend personally, you know, whatever thing I felt was necessary for the event. Um, obviously, if it gets into Anything really major, he's your EMP is going to have to bring it back to the full board and get approval for that. You know, like that. when we get to get an estimator here, we're talking 30 something thousand. I didn't write that check out, but I came back to the full board. Um, so decide how much you're going to authorize the EMP for incidentals expenditures. Sounds like he's going to do a shelter, set it up. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to have to staff it or not. Right across is available. And if you needed costs, I believe Roger may have some, but maybe not. Check on that. Uh, I think Ed is pretty much aware of the EMB and you know, the role he needs to play. But Biggie is being out, being seen, checking with all of your crews. And that's just not the town, but the village as well. If they need anything, make sure you try to help them get it. Um, remember that you want to be responsible for everything. You're, everything is on me and these shoulders now for what happens in this town. But you can delegate it and support the experts. You know, these guys are your experts. Give them what they need to do their job and support them. And uh, you pay, you pay it to the media so you can control your message. Um, and keep the select board in the loop. They're the ones that hold the first strings. So you need to keep them in, in the loop of what's going on. I think maybe it's changed now. I think it informed the duty officer to play the state of mercy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and oh, this is the big reminder, especially for the highway, take pictures. You've got it all perfect. I think we've been hammering that enough. Uh, and as RJ spoke, okay, I'll take the right car, it's emergency only. We do have the emergency engine fund. I believe there's like 50 something thousand in there. If you needed to, you know, pay for the fire department hours, you can pull it out of that. Fun. Uh, and priority that basically I went by was uh, light and wind is first, municipal property infrastructure is second, and then private homeowner assistance is third. So, you know, just a few things I jotted down. And I'm available if you need me for anything, but I am required. <laughs> You're the first one everyone will call. <laughs> one of the things that I think has changed, I, I'm noticing that people are going to the town website to look at the news and, and, and see what's going on. So I think that that is really important. I don't know about how hard I'm it's probably look at that look. It's probably super hard, but to put, I go to, I go to the town website, I would like flood of July 12th to be really obvious and really easy to find because you sort of have to maneuver around to find it. And that that might be nice. And Evan, that may be something that you could use to update too because I'm 
you know, over the co-op, when we have outages and stuff, we are on it all the time. Our websites, our Facebook, all our social media, and people just do that. Well, set up. Pause you for a second. Beth, you know how to do that on the web page? I don't. Okay. No. I just want to, it's almost four. I'm going to tell Lydia about it. But she can do it. She can do that. To put that as a banner for people, because people are not going to be looking for anything else but that for the next 24 hours. Um, and if they can find that, and if Evan, you, you can communicate with Lydia in a way that that gets updated to the best of your ability. Yeah, I can. I would say, are we, are you, did you volunteer to put on a flyer or? I'm working on it right now. Okay. If we make a flyer with all of the information and maybe even just a screen grab of the NOAA graph, um, then- I don't want anything to be too complicated. Okay. Um, so we're not gonna make anything too complicated. What I'm saying is we could just have that flyer be like someone clicks on the link that says exactly what Mark said on the website and that flyer comes up. It's just very simple. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the flyer comes up. Yes. And it, the flyer has all the information that we have and- so we're getting into details again, and I Sorry. think we can work yeah, through this with the well, yeah. emergency board. Um, there is one decision I think that we need to make to Eric about, which is a valid one, and that's information officer. Um, he's actually right in the past that had been the municipal administrator. Carl is not here. We currently don't have one. That is our information officer in the dilemma. Yeah, anyway, so and we discussed it before. Is there an alternate listed in the line for an information officer? Yeah. I don't believe there's an alternate for that. And we should probably, for this emergency, we should probably designate someone to do that. I think there should be a consistent message, and there should be one person that's giving that. Why wouldn't it be me? Like, I don't understand. Why do you need an alternate? You need to sleep sometimes. It's not you in the lab. It's not this. It, it is for him. Oh, it is. EOC public information officers. Yeah. Oh, it's the, it's the board chair, not the. Not yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Sorry, my mistake. They should have sleeping. <laughs> We're going to get right, a lot of I got to bed late. I'm good. Okay. Uh, okay, anything else that we need to cover before we close? Dollar, dollar amounts. Oh, yeah, dollar amounts. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I don't. If a couple hundred dollars is sufficient. It's... Well, a couple hundred bucks isn't going to buy as much. I already bought, I bought food. There's already, there's some food here. I uh, did. <laughs> <I did. laughs> An example was, you know, an event that's happening and needing one off in some extended period of time. The requirements exhilarate quite often put the meals together, and I would pay for whatever the cost of food was, and that way all crews would know, get fed in the same time, same place. So that one example that I would think why you only pull games or coffee or something like that, and other examples. It's mostly just for the food, whatever food is real. I have any confidence that nothing is not going um, <clears> to <throat> waste the money. So, right. in, in the, the last, that, yeah, in, in the interest of not having to get back to deal with this, I, I would make a motion to authorize up to $2,000 to be expended for incidentals uh, to make this emergency. Do you have a motion? Do you have a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Uh, just for my clarity, uh, incidentals, you know, if we need the fire department to do work that's outside of emergencies, well, I'm not going to know what that is. That would be not considered incidentals. I, I'm guessing RJ is going to send us a bill for. Right, but it wouldn't be until after the fact. Right. Yeah. So, so my my motion wouldn't cover necessarily those things. Right. Okay. It would cover yes. nice things that yeah. Eric's talking about. Food. Right. Understood. Right. The stuff that in the current environment, this 
same way this this hurt is gonna hit the threshold, you'll we'll, you'll we'll be able to get some reimbursement. Right. So. Okay, I think I'm good. Uh, okay, anything else? Meeting adjourned at 401. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Cheryl, not before the night set. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. All right.